third quarter update. What did you make of the numbers? Kate, I think the numbers really coming in line with expectations. We were expecting to see underlying profit at $1.5 billion and that would have been up from $1.4 billion in the previous corresponding period. We've actually seen it coming in a touch above at $1.53 billion. We know that there have been tough domestic conditions, especially in the retail bank as well as the wealth uh, division. And in fact, we are expecting to hear an update on the wealth strategy on the 28th of November now. So it does look like some changes may be in store there. But really the strength of this result has uh, come from the Asia Pacific re region, New Zealand as well as global markets. So we have seen some strength coming through. We were expecting to see the net interest margin remain steady at 2.37%, but we actually haven't seen an update coming through on the net interest margin, uh, similar to NAB, which uh, didn't provide that number either. So it does look like the bank's moving away from these quarterly updates. In fact, Westpac has actually scrapped these updates. But ANZ is actually our pick out of the big four. It does have a better capital adequacy and funding than its peers. Exposure to that Asia-Pacific region where it, where it is looking to get its um, its earnings, underlying earnings, about 25 to 30 percent by 2017. So ANZ, a solid result today coming in line with expectations. No real surprises here. Yeah, Julia, why scrap this update and why are the banks giving us less and less information in them? I guess it has been it has been a difficult environment and it's also a difficult environment to forecast given the troubles that we are seeing. We saw Commonwealth Bank coming out with its full year result and in that result we did see an update on its net interest margin and we did see it com coming under considerable pressure. We were expecting to see a result of 2.17 percent there instead it came down to 2.09 percent. So it has been quite a volatile figure that has been uh, falling down so I guess less information coming through from the bank but the profit results are pretty much in line with what the market's expecting. So the profit results in line but the net interest margin a little bit um, more difficult to see but uh, ANZ out of the big four a pretty healthy one we were expecting to see 2.37 percent. And Julia Lee you know we hate to put you on the spot that so often we do because you're such an incredible wealth of knowledge. Santos first half net profit coming in at 262 million dollars that's down 48 percent. It's uh, issued an interim dividend of 15 cents a share. It's maintained its full year production guidance and uh, first half underlying profit has come in at 283 million up 20 percent. You don't have to comment on those numbers specifically but if you can just give us a, a bit of a wrap of the conditions Santos has been operating under. Okay, so I think this result coming in slightly below our expectations. We were expecting to see an underlying profit of about $385 million, but that dividend are coming in on expectations. So it does look like Santos are just coming in below um, our expectations there. But of course, if we have a look at the oil and gas companies, they have had a pretty good run of late, but we have seen oil prices um, are moderating uh, from the highs that we saw a few years ago. So I guess that Santos result, the last out of the big companies to report today, we've now seen our QB Insurance, Treasury Wine Estates, APN Media, as well as ANZ and Santos coming out with results. A <laughs> pretty busy Friday morning today. Julia, I don't know how you remember all those numbers. <laughs> You're incredible right off the bat. Okay, we've also got APN Media out with half year numbers. What's your take on this result today? This result coming in line with our expectations, although the dividend was slightly below what we were expecting. We were expecting to see a uh, profit in at $19.2 million. It's actually coming at $19 million. If you include the impairment charges, then there is a pretty big loss there of $319 million. Now, the dividend of 1.5 cents really disappoints. We were expecting to see 2.4 cents there. But of course, the, the drag on APN Media earnings comes from its traditional publishing business, and that really continued. So publishing continued to be a drag. Outside of publishing, we saw a lot of po positives. We saw radio revenue up by about 8%. We we also saw its outdoor advertising unit being uh, a standout and its digital um, media revenue up by a massive 81%. Of course, its digital revenue um, its digital revenue makes up less than 1% uh, in FY11 of the groups. But of course, it's been expanding in this area. We saw APN Media taking that 82% stake in Brands Exclusive. So that should see the digital revenue uh, uh, 
pretty much double to around about 2% in the current financial year. But all in all, the result coming in line with expectations. We know the difficult part of this business is the traditional publishing arm, and that's because newspapers have been under so much pressure. But it is good to see growth in some of the other areas with radio, outdoor advertising, uh, the standout, and of course, it's trying to grow its digital media presence. Yeah, absolutely. Finally, Julia, your take on today's trade. We've got uh, about 45 minutes till we kick things off. Spy Futures pointing to gains of about six tenths of a percent at the open. It looks like we're in store for a positive Friday. Kate, it's going to be a good one and it tops, tops out another positive week for the Australian market. That makes it the fifth consecutive week of gains for the Aussie share market and it's the longest stretch of gains that we've seen since August 2010. So it has been an extremely positive week. If we have a look at the leads, the US market was up by 0.7%. We saw some mixed economic reports coming through but the market really seemed to be helped along by some reports that the Spanish government could speed out the bailout of the Spanish banks. So that, and that seemed to help market sentiment. So we did see commodities higher. Copper was up by 0.7%. Um, if we have a look at uh, the earnings, QB insurance coming slightly below our expectations. So we may see QB insurance coming off a little bit. The dividend payment also a little bit below our expectations. But the market expected to really focus on those earnings reports because there isn't much economic data coming out locally all, or, all around the region today.